Welcome to BizWire. I'm Joseph Nordstrom in Beijing. The rebalancing of China's economy could well be one of the most profound stories of the early 21st century. After years of false starts, it appears that this epic process may finally be getting underway in earnest and it can't come soon enough. China may be in the midst of a classic credit bubble. Its ratio of total credit to GDP has risen from around 115 percent in 2008 to an estimated 173 percent today. And this acceleration in credit expansion that has spelled danger in many other economies. Much of this has come in the poorly regulated shadow banking sector, where the annual rate of credit expansion exceeds 50 percent. The Chinese authorities, led by Premier Li Keqiang, are signaling that this must slow sharply. The Bank for International Settlements says the danger point for the debt service ratio was found to be around 20 to 25 percent. While reliable figures for China are hard to find, analyst Wei Yao at Societe Generale says the ratio now stands at about 39 percent of GDP. This figure is considerably above the danger level, and much of the recent increase in credit is widely believed to have been used to extend the maturity of previous debts, another classic warning sign. Local government financing vehicles have found their earlier funding streams, mostly from land sales, running dry, so they are reported to have resorted to alternative sources of funds. Chairman of Fulcrum Asset Management Gavin Davies wrote in the Financial Times that in order to create a soft landing, credit growth needs to be reduced to single digits for many years, compared to the 23 percent annual increases seen since 2008. Davy says apart from the financial consequences of the credit expansion, there are now also real concerns that much of the resulting capital spending has been directed towards areas with low economic returns. For many years, China has been accused of relying too much on investment as the prime driver of its growth, both in generating aggregate demand and in boosting supply capacity. But these worries have always been countered by pointing to China's low levels of capital stock per head and to its extraordinary GDP growth. This also may have changed in the wake of the 2008 stimulus package, which raised the share of investment in GDP. Research from the IMF indicates that excess investment has grown to around 10 percent of GDP, concentrated in the inland provinces and industrially in the manufacturing and real estate sectors. Analysts say to achieve a successful rebalancing of demand and avoid wasted resources, private investment growth needs to slow to around 4 percent per year over the next decade, compared to 10 percent in the last. Much has been discussed about the dangerous maturity mismatches with wealth management products and unregulated shadow banking, but many respected economists are not worried about a financial shock. They point to the recent stress in the Chinese money markets as resulting from a deliberate signal from authorities to rein in excess lending and hammer through important structural reforms. If officials can rebalance the economy, some short-term pain in the form of lower GDP growth rates could be worth the long-term benefits. For now, liberalizing the financial sector, including interest rates, seems to have the best chance of being enacted. Wholesale changes to China's state-owned enterprises, though, are not likely possible until after the president and premier, Xi Jinping and Li Keqiang, consolidate their power enough to battle the entrenched interests who are quite satisfied with the status quo. You're watching BizWire on the Blue Ocean Network. Stay tuned for more in Economic Insight.